So hello guys, welcome. Today I'm gonna be covering a topic that you will rarely see on my channel and that is farming. More specifically, Cedar's Wisps. You are probably asking why Cedar's Wisps and why now and my answer to that would be a result of my curiosity. There are many videos on YouTube describing the best path and all that. So I thought I'd put them to the test and see whether they are really the best and if not how close are they to being so. So to tackle this problem I think it's the it's best to give a brief overview of two main ideas the traveling salesman problem and the genetic algorithm. So in brief terms the traveling salesman problem applied to warframe is when Eteno needs to travel to a number of different wisp spawns to gather wisps. Now we ask in which order shall he visit them to minimize the distance he travels. This problem is computationally very hard even with 10 different spawn sites there are more than 3.5 million possible paths that this Tano can take meaning that for this task we'll need something that will hopefully perform better than just a brute force check of the parts. Now, hoping that RNGesus will bless us with some good luck, we will make use of what's called the genetic algorithm. Now, the genetic algorithm conceptually is very interesting. It performs optimization the same way that evolution does by natural selection. Now, at this point, I need to emphasize that I encourage all the creationists among you to leave their philosophies at the door for a moment, or else just skip forward to the results immediately. So, the way that the genetic algorithm works is that it looks at a population and then it evaluates their fitness. Then the weakest ones die off and the rest are moved to the next generation. Now the empty spaces are then filled by new specimens. These specimens can be created in a lot of different ways, like for example you can crossbreed any of the two survivors together and create a new one. Or else you can mutate one of the survivors by changing it a little bit. Or else you can just do some combination of the two. And then you just rinse and repeat. You keep evolving and evolving and creating new generations until it uh, converges on the optimum. Which, if you sort of think about it, it should converge on the optimum because you're taking the best each time and tweaking them a bit. Now, onto a quick rundown of the code. I will go over this very quickly, but there will be a link in the description to the GitHub page where you can see it in detail, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments about this. For this task, I am using JavaScript with the p5.js library, which facilitates animation and drawing on HTML canvas. Firstly, we set up the variables for our parameters, we will be using the population size of 500 per generation and we will only keep the best 100 of that generation for the next generation. Now to store the wisp locations, we have a wisp object with an x and y coordinate. This just makes it easier to deal with expanding the arrays further down. Now in the preload function we will load the map to display as a background and then in the canvas setup we will define dimensions of said canvas and the thickness of the draw lines. Now in the draw function which is executed once per frame we will draw the image and on it the Cetus wisps as circles connected by line paths. With each frame we will also evolve a new generation once there are more than three wisps on the map. This is because if you have only three points there is only one way you can traverse them once and only once, so it's no use running the algorithm. As an event listener we are using the mouse click function where it creates a wisp where you click the way we have it set up. If there are more than three wisps it also generates a population of paths. Again the limit on the three wisps is the same as mentioned earlier. There are also some helper functions to calculate distances, path lengths and uh, finding the index of the smallest element in an array, which are, you know, whatever. 
Now for evolution we will only be using a mutation technique so you can sort of implement a crossbreeding technique but it's not that straightforward so I thought I'd keep everything so simple for this. So basically what this does is it takes in a path and two points on that path and switches them around and returns the new path. So with that in mind next we go to the create population function. This basically just takes the list of locations that we have stored and uh, it just returns 500 mutations of it. We don't necessarily have to optimize at this stage, we just have to create 500 variations. Now, the optimization happens in the fitness evaluation function and this is done by setting the order of the wisps as the generation's best first. So you, you find the, f the best one in the generation and you take that and put it in the locks array that you see up there and then putting the best hundred of that generation in a new population and after that you sort of fill the spaces with random mutations of those best 100 so okay so let's test it out as we can see it is running quite beautifully let's leave it going for a bit Okay, so now after leaving it to run for two days, we get this as the shortest path to all the wisp spawns. Now, let's be honest, considering that there are almost 10 to the 84 paths possible with 61 points, it is very likely that it did not even come across the true optimum during runtime. So there are some things that one should consider to sort of improve this. With that in mind, let's be a little more clever with how we define our points. Most likely, anyone farming wisps will be running a loot radar mod or something like that. So we can mark only one point where there are spawn clusters, so to speak. For example, in the Mortus Lungfish Lake, there are a lot of points we can just mark that once since we will uh, just visit it and just check the minimap and also if there are spawn locations lying on a straight line we can skip the middle ones and hope that the smallest path passes over the middle ones as well so that way while you're traveling you can just look at it and if there's nothing you just ignore them and one can also just discard some of the spawn points completely that are deemed not worth visiting, so to speak, which means they require a long travel distance for very little gain, effectively. So doing this, the number of points is down to 27, with only 10 to 28 possible paths, which is a lot less possibilities, and it gives this path as an optimum which is pretty similar to the usual lap that people run. So I guess they were right, after all. And uh, so here are a few runs I did. First going one lap and then just showing the uh, amount of wisps I got. Keep in mind I do have a resource booster, so just keep in mind that I'm constantly getting double the amount that you would normally get without it. And with that, I guess that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to thumbs up and subscribe for more. Bye.